So DJ, welcome. Thanks for being on. Yes, thank you for having me, Jessica. Um, I am a fan of your podcast. And so when you reached out, I was like, oh, yay, let me Oh, up. thanks. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Yeah, I think, did you tell James Woods about it? Because that's how I think he said that's that's how I learned about you. Because I said, how did you hear about the Kids Yoga Podcast? Yeah, so I, 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 I don't know if I was listening to it. I started following you. I can't remember how I even got into it. And then um, I was like, hey, man, I saw this podcast. Like, I think you would totally be into it. And I was so excited to see that you had. Yes. Him on, so. yeah, yeah. He was an amazing guest. That was oh, yeah. awesome conversation. <laughs> we'll appreciate that. Um, I'm so excited to connect with you because I've been following you on social media and I can't tell you the amount of times I see a post and I'm like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> I just, it's like so many times you've put into words, things that I think I, that's how I, my mind works, but I haven't been able to articulate certain things. So you mm -hmm. really put them to perspective. So we'll get to all of that. Um, yes. But I want people to, who don't know you to just um, learn more about you. So let's start at the beginning of your work with youth. So what, what inspired you to start working with children and with teenagers? I have always kind of had you know, people always say like, oh, you're so good with kids. Like I would get that compliment or like probably early in my twenties, maybe. Um, but it wasn't until, oh man, it might've been 2009. I had got a job working at an after school program and I was working primarily with like at the elementary level, but with the older kids at the elementary level. So like fourth, fifth, sixth graders. Um, and so just kind of realized how fun it was to just kind of interact with the kids and be a kid to, to a certain extent. Um, and so I just, that kind of sparked it. And then I kind of, in a way, just kept being involved in it. So I went from that to working with older kids in the after-school programming. And then I, you know, worked in another city in their sports programming. So we did like after-school, like sports camp or during the summer, I mean, sports camp. Um, and so then it kind of evolved even more in 2014 when I started working at a nonprofit um, as a mentor for foster and probation youth. And that is kind of where I really started to hone in on like utilizing my story and my past to really help students. And then the more I started talking to students, uh, it really challenged me to say, okay, maybe I need to talk to these parents because <laughs> there's a lot of times I have conversations with students and it's just like, oh, I need to talk to your parents or I need mm. to, you know, get your parents to understand, you know, what, what we need to do to help you be successful. So um, yeah, I started there, you know, working with the younger kids and just as I started working with the older kids, the high schoolers, um, it really put into perspective that my voice was needed. Um, and I learned, you know, working with them that even though I used to hide the fact that I was, you know, dealing with trauma as a child and I was going through the foster care system, um, it, they helped me understand, like, I should not hide that, that mm. I should be open with that because, it helps students like understand like, oh, he went through it. And so I'm gonna, you know, listen to what he has to say because this this could help me get through my issues and my problems. Yeah, I mean, that's connecting with those kids where they are and really truly mm. understanding, having been through it yourself. I can imagine yeah. for them, it's like, there's probably very few people who actually could understand what they were yeah. going through. Yeah. So, but, so I saw you're a sports statistician. How did you, how did you go? I want to see the connection from that to working with kids. Like, how yes. did that happen? So I, throughout high school, wanted to be in sports in some form or fashion. Like, you know, I was always an athlete. I ran track in high school all throughout and then played football the first couple of years. Um, and so when I graduated from high school, my intention was to get involved in sports. And then when I got to college, my intention was to be an athletic director. And so I, and so in 2013, I got a, um, I got an internship to UCLA working in the athletic department with the football team, like as a mentor. Um, and so I was like, okay, once I got that job, like everything's going to be great. I'm going to get a call. I'm going to be an athletic director somewhere soon. Like I, I thought I was in. Um, and once I finished that internship, 
um, I wasn't getting any job opportunities. Like I kept getting rejection email after rejection email. And so um, the sports statistician work was kind of birthed from that job. And so I kind of, you know, stayed in it. But in terms of trying to make that a career, as far as the athletic director is concerned, it didn't happen for me. And so that in 2014 is when I wasn't getting the job opportunities. And then I ended up finding a job at the nonprofit. And that's kind of how I started to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I transitioned into working with students. But the funny thing is, Right now, in 20, so in 2018, I stepped down from the nonprofit and was going to like do DJ Inspire's uplifting work with students and parents full time. And I got this amazing opportunity to work at Fox. And at first I was gonna say no, cause I was like, I'm good on my business. Like I'm working towards that. And you know, my, my boss was adamant about, hey, you know, you're building your business. You know, I understand that we'll work with you, we'll give you time as, as you need. And so I just kind of created this partnership with them to work at Fox full time, but also, you know, work behind the scenes and build up my business. So that is why I, yes, am on the sports side and I work with students. I do. And are both. you still doing, you're doing both right now? I, yep. Yep. Wow. Okay. Both. So you're busy. Okay. <laughs> yes. Very busy and <laughs> tired. <laughs> yeah. And you, you've got a son, right? You've got... Yes. Yeah. I locked okay, him so... out. Hope he yeah. might try to come in here. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> it's okay. It's a... Yeah. We've had plenty of uh, interruptions before. Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So now I see how it all kind of weaves yeah. together. Um, I wanted to ask you this. I hadn't sent you this question, but in your bio, you mentioned that like going through the foster care system for mm -hmm. nine years, but that there were a few people that inspired you to be great. And I hear that over and over that it mm -hmm. really takes, you know, that one or two or three oh, people yeah. in your life that can really change things. I was wondering if you'd be open to sharing um, about maybe one or two of those people like it and the impact they had. Cause I think people don't realize like when you work with kids, the kind of impact you could potentially have. Oh yeah. Yeah, huge. And I, I literally was just having this conversation with the parent group that I uh, run. And I was just telling them, like, just making a point about connection and, 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 and establishing a purposeful relationship with your child. And I was like, you know, relationship is so strong that, you know, my relationship with my mother isn't that strong right now because we lost connection for so many years with me, you know, being in the system and her, you know, being in trouble with the law. But, you know, I had my mentor, Mr. Hines, who I met when I was in the fourth grade, and he made that connection with me to the point where I make it a point to reach out to him every now and then as an adult. And I make sure that, you know, every big, you know, thing that I accomplish, I let him know. And, mm -hmm. you know, just because I know he's going to be so proud because of that connection that we've made. Um, and so, yeah, Mr. Hines is very important. And I always bring up my grandma because, even though I went into the foster care system, I was blessed enough to still be with extended family. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess that would be kinship is what they call it. And so when I stayed with my grandma initially, um, she, you know, she just kind of loved me in a way that I just wasn't used to, um, showed it in a way that I just wasn't used to, you know, before going to her home. And I tell the story about how you know, the first time she made a meal and I wasn't really feeling it. And she kind of gave me the choice of like, well, you don't have to eat it. And I was like, what? <laughs> we got to, you know, something so mm. small, but like, you know, her just, I don't know, just creating a, a, some sense of normalcy to my childhood that I just wasn't used to. Like before that, it was just like, chaotic and traumatic and everything mm. just kind of like you don't know what was going to happen you don't know if you were going to be staying in this house for long like you don't know if the lights were going to get cut off so all these different things that are kind of happening for you and and for us to kind of live with my grandma initially out of all of that um it really kind of helped me understand like okay this could be different or you know my my childhood could be different um, and she the one that encouraged me to there's a park right around the corner from her house so she was like y'all need to go there after school and that's when I met my mentor Mr. Hines so I would say my uh, grandma for sure uh, grandma Lois and then uh, Mr. Hines that's amazing yeah. I mean if it's like in that moment when she said oh you don't have to eat it you you found oh, you yeah. were like I have autonomy uh -huh. like wait a second I can make a decision <laughs> yeah for myself like I couldn't that's I mean I can't imagine it you know it's and it's funny like 
a small moment like that. We, you know, yeah. like we don't know what's going to resonate with kids. So, uh, I mean, so to hear about your grandma, Mr. Hines, it's like these, oh, these yeah. people that they helped you to, to be who you are today. And I can't imagine the struggle you've been through, but to, to decide to like transform that. And now the, the work that you're doing, Oh yeah, it's really amazing. And I'm kind of glad you, you're getting those uh, rejections at the beginning of your I'm career. <laughs> Because you wouldn't you know, be doing this, right? I definitely wouldn't. I, and even it's so crazy just thinking about it. Cause I, so I had got the nonprofit job and I literally was three weeks into it. I get a call from, I think it was the university of Wyoming. I, I was applying to so many different jobs. Mm. It was crazy. But the university of Wyoming called me, I, you know, sent the voicemail and the guy was like, Hey, just calling you to set up an interview for the job. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like your timing could not be worse. And uh, I ended up calling him back and let him know. And he was like, you know, it's so crazy that um, you pretty much have been on my radar since the beginning of the summer. They, they, we, you know, we, he had called me around August. He said he, I had been on his radar since June. Mm. And I was just like, Dang. And for me, as a person who was a believer, I'm like, all right, God wants me to clearly do this work. Yes. <laughs> and yes. so I'm going to just, you know, stop fighting it. <laughs> right. Oh, that's great. You listened. It's like, yeah, oh, the yeah. doors were closing, like, nope, oh, wrong yeah. one. So, exactly. No. <laughs> and here's the right one, sir. Yes. <laughs> and, and you've got right. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, tell me about your work with, um, with parents. So for people that maybe don't follow you on social media yet, mm -hmm. um, if you can give like your general philosophy about parenting yeah. and also just how you kind of mentioned how you started working with parents because yeah. you're working with the kids, but um, yeah. just the type of work you do with them. Yeah. So I, you know, it's funny. I, my DJ inspires parenting page is literally, I just established it in December and originally mm -hmm. from my original page, DJ inspires all, I would post parenting stuff every now and then. And that stuff would always get like a good response from my followers. And so I was like, okay, it seems like these people appreciate this type of information or me. A lot of it is like, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm really challenging our thoughts as parents to really put things into the proper perspective as far as our actions and our intentions towards our kids. So that I kind of already had it in my mind, but the, the reality is because I started doing the work with parents, you know, a few years back, even before I was a parent, um, it honestly was birthed out of just a need at the organization but importantly it was like I, I kept hearing these students it was a a, a a consistent theme throughout all the students I would talk to and just to give context on the type of student that usually gets referred to me is um, students that are struggling you know you know to manage their emotions students that might be failing multiple classes students that might have gotten into fights at school or brought you know drugs or different things like paraphernalia weed whatever it might be um these are the type of offenses that they're up against when they are referred to me and so i would meet with these students i would get to the bottom of just the different things that were they were you know having challenges with and a lot of it was miscommunication with their parents a lot of it was um their parents weren't showing them that they love them they might say it they might you know parents might feel like I know I posted today about it but mm -hmm. the parents parents might feel like they know that their kids love them but the reality is the kids don't know that they love them because they're you know doing all these different things to seek attention um and so I, you know all these different things parents doing certain things where you're like stop parents like don't do that mm -hmm. you know and so I kept hearing all these different things from the students and I was just like I like I gotta you know work with these parents I gotta have these conversations so you know I, in the beginning I started meeting with parents and it was I was nervous because I didn't have kids at the time so I always knew like there would be the parent that'd be like you don't have kids you don't understand right. <laughs> <laughs> or it's like well what do you know you I can't be friends with my kid you could be friends and I'm just like yeah if you could get past the fact that you know this young person is giving you advice and just get to the point of like Maybe if I just adhere or listen to what he's saying and apply it, it might improve my relationship with my child. And so it started there and it just got, you know, <laughs> more and more intense, more and more classes, more and more schools wanted me to interact with their parents. And um, it just, I've, I've learned that 
I just had a way of communicating to them with kind of like being a real list, but also letting them know like, hey, it's really coming from a place of, you know, care, understanding, love. Like at the end of the day, I have a heart for these students and I want the best for them. And if I could help the adults help them, oh man, it's just, it's just a win-win in my book. So for me, it was like, okay, how can I help them? How can I give them guidance? Um, and it's crazy. I have parents that will go through <laughs> so many, every time I have a group, they're there and they got the information <laughs> already, but they're like, no, we, we enjoy it. We appreciate it. And, and for me, I'm like, yay, <laughs> we did it. See, that's the best. Cause it's like, I see it. It's almost like a tree and it's like, you're dealing with the root of the problem oh, yeah. Yeah. instead of so often it's like, we see these kids and they're this is the behavior and let's punish it and yeah. let's give that yeah consequences and it's like like you're saying you saw the root cause you're like okay I'm, yeah. I see where this is coming from so then to yeah. educate the parents who are then that that's where it all starts that's yeah that's huge yeah we we one thing I've learned working with so many parents over the years is we we either learn from our parents and we just adapt and do whatever they did to us. Or we recognize that the way that our parents did it was just so not the right way that we do the complete opposite of that. But none, not too many parents parent it specific for their child. Mm. Like, not too many of them are like, hmm, my kid is this way. Let me adjust my parenting to adapt to my child. Yes. A lot of the parents are like, kid adapt to me and they're screaming it from the rooftop and they're trying to force it you know of the wrong piece to the puzzle and it's just like for me I'm like hey stop all that that's so that's energy draining that's tiring let's take some self-assessment right now let's look at ourselves how can we change how can we shift our language how can we shift our intentions and I promise you you might start seeing some changes in your student by saying, okay, let me do something different as opposed to like, no, this kid needs to listen and, and adhere to what I'm trying to say or else. It's like, then you're just going to keep fighting and be tired and good luck with that. <laughs> yes. No, I mean, what you're describing and why I asked you to be on, it's like yeah. you're describing mindfulness. You're describing yeah. being, oh, yeah. being present with what is, yeah. seeing what's in front of you. And I, that resonates so much the either you kind of just repeat the pattern or you react to it yeah. and you do the opposite, which isn't always necessarily yeah. the right thing to do because <laughs> exactly. it's probably the other extreme. So yeah. I, I love what you're saying. Like see, and every kid is different too. Like you're saying oh, yeah. like right now I have a, a son and a daughter. It's like the way that I approach them is completely different because they're mm -hmm. such different kids. It's like, it's fascinating. Yeah. Well, it, this reminds me of you had, um, a post I really liked about old school versus new school parenting. Yeah. And that made a ton of sense to me. And I was also like, you know what? It's courageous to say these things. Cause I'm sure you get, I'm oh. sure you get people <laughs> like saying, Hey, <laughs> you know, like feeling really attacked or whatever. Can you, yeah. can you just tell us about like, just in your, in your mind, the, the difference between the, the old school mentality and then where we're going with the new school? Yeah. I, for me, I feel like the old school way was more concerned with the parental like thoughts and feelings and emotions. And the new school way has kind of shifted the focus for us to be more in tune with our child's thoughts, feelings, and emotions. I, I feel like the old school parenting way was built to cater to the parent. And the new school way is like, no, but the reality is when you come in, like when you make the decision, you have kids and that happens, like we ultimately have a duty to raise up and train up our kids in the way that they should go. And hopefully they are contributors to our society. And so for me, it's like we've shifted it away from it being all about us mm -hmm. and really shifted it to like, OK, how can I put myself in position to be? for my child so they could be the best version of themselves. Yes. Yeah, yeah that makes so much sense. Do you <laughs> get a lot of uh, people that that write to you that are like angry about this, that that feel that it's an attack or do you or do you see that because the way you communicate it, I think I, I feel like you can get through <laughs> to people. I, yeah. I would think. 
<laughs> yeah, I so it depends. Like I on the IG page, surprisingly, there's not too many people. Um, there's been a few apples that come in and they're like, yeah, yeah. And I'm always good about, you know, responding to them or, you know, further explaining my point or whatever it right. might be. Um, but uh, I know <laughs> there was a big post that went viral for me um, where I said three reasons why people can't lo- let go of the old school like parenting way um, or whooping or so- I can't remember exactly mm. what I said. But um, and so I said, like, you know, they don't like the fact that their kid have the ability to speak up and maybe they didn't. I think I said um, so there were some other things on there and that that post in particular <laughs> got <laughs> got some people out. Oh, yeah. Well, one lady in particular was like she commented. So the way Facebook is set up, y'all know, it, for those who are still on it. So you have the post and then there's you can comment on there's like multiple pictures to the post. So you can comment on each of the pictures. And so she posted on the, the post. She posted on all the pictures of the post. And so I was going back and forth with her and I'm like, and she's like, you, you're bothering me and you're talking about you, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, we're arguing against you or whatever it might be. And I was like, lady, you commented on every single one of the things. What do you mean? I came to you. I'm bothering you. I, but yeah, right. sorry. I didn't oh, mean yeah. Get... <laughs> yeah. But social media, it can get crazy in those comments. Oh, man, like <laughs> it does. I ended up having a blocker. I'm like a good, yeah. some of my friends in the field, they're like, don't even bother. Right. Sometimes Just... it's not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know why I gave her time on this. On this podcast. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. But you know what it is? It's like, when you hit hit that nerve for people mm-hmm. and if, if it's it's hard to hear it could be really hard yeah. to hear some of these things yeah especially if you're doing things a certain way it, you could feel like so, as a parent like defensive and you kind of alluded to that like when you first started your parenting work and you weren't yet a parent so yeah. that like you probably dealt with that already like you knew how yeah. to like people would approach that which yeah. brings me to um since having your son which how old is he he's four now Oh, he's four. Okay. Yeah. So since having your son, has your work changed or shifted at all? Like has your perspective changed or do you feel like it's just kind of amplified what you were already doing? The, f- the first thing I've noticed is that I'm really good at helping parents with their teens. I'm still a rookie at toddlers. <laughs> oh, yeah, there's something. <laughs> That's the first thing I learned. Yeah. When he gets to a teen, I'm gonna be good. But right, right now, yeah, you're ready. <laughs> no, but um, it he he really has taught me um so, so much in terms of just patience and understanding, and um, it 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 has allowed me to even take even more different perspective when I go into working with the parents. And now I can confidently be like, well, I'm a parent now, you know? Yes. <laughs> so that yes. part is always nice, just to curtail some of the people who still right. fight against it, but. Um, for me, it's, it just helped me. Like, I actually think since he was born, I've challenged myself to read more about parenting and, Mm -hmm. you know, follow different parenting pages just to really boost, you know, what I already know, you know, based off those conversations with students, but I just want to keep adding to, you know, add an ammo to it so I can keep helping parents in a real way. So yeah, he really, him being born has challenged me in so many ways. I'm, I'm talking like, before him, I didn't even go to therapy. When he was born, mm. I was like, oh, I need to go to therapy, right? Because yeah. I saw a post, somebody said, I, I posted it and they were like, you know, when you're looking at your kid, you're looking at some parts of you that you either need to deal with or, yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, and yeah. I'm like, oh gosh, that's so true. So yeah, man, my son being born has changed so much for me. Yeah, I, I can relate. I actually started therapy um, when I was pregnant with my daughter because I like right away, I was like, <laughs> Oh, oh, yeah. I, was, I already felt connected to her, and I was like, "Oh, I got, I got some stuff I got to work on. I don't yeah. want to, you know, pass along these things." And and um, yeah, children, it's they bring out so much, the good and yeah. and the bad. Oh yeah. And and but to have that, you've already got that background where you're like, you have that perspective of being like being able to step back and say. Like, mm-hmm. All right. I know for me, I'm like, I'm having a huge reaction to this. Like, yes. <laughs> what's this about? I should step away, you know? Yeah. 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 Like make, oh, I think, and parents in the old school way, I, I 50% give them grace, 50% hold them accountable. Right. Hmm. And I think one of the things 
you know, that I think they felt to be in tune with is their kids' tantrums, their kids' behaviors, some of the ki- things that their kids do, they fail to put it into the perspective of this could be a development thing and not necessarily like, oh, this, this kid is just giving me a problem, right? Yeah, they're manipulating. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. So all of that. And I'm like, I think with therapy and just working with students, I, I just, I have been able to separate the child from the behavior. And yes. in, in my son's eyes, he is who he is, loving, kind, funny as heck, like all these different things. But there are moments where he behaves a certain way or he, you know, does certain things. I'm not making his behavior or his actions who he is as a person. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> like you're just speaking my language. That's yeah. what, you know, what's hard um, taking this approach to parenting, I find is so, like, say, like you're saying, there's a behavior my daughter says something that maybe sounds like rude or disrespectful or and it's in front of family say Mm -hmm. in my head I'm able to separate the behavior from what she said and I'm like "Mm, I think she's really hungry it's been a long day (laughs) and she's overstimulated so like I don't take that I mean of course when I'm in not in a good place I I might take it personally but if I'm in a good place I could say okay I see where that's coming from and I'm able to like handle it But when there's like other people around, say like the grandparents Mm. around watching and I'm like, uh, I still do. I always parent how I want to parent, but I'm Mm. like, I I can sometimes feel like the the judgment of like, that I'm not handling it in the way that maybe they would have. Um, So yeah, that's for me, that's the challenge sometimes is like, it's almost like it's a long game the way we're parenting. Yeah. And it's like, I, I, I'm hoping, you know, we'll see the fruits of our labor, but it's yeah. like in the moment, sometimes I don't think uh, people necessarily understand like, yeah. where you're coming from. <laughs> and and I, another distinction between the old school and the new school way, the old school way was all about quick results, which yes. is why they feel like whoopings work, which is why they feel right. like yelling at their kid work. Right. And for us, we're like, at the, at the end of the day, we really want long-term you know, results. We want them 10 years from now for not to not have to heal from our parenting. We want them to, when they get to 18, they're really free to be whoever they want to be. And they don't have to do certain things that they have to, you know, overcome their past before they can go towards their future. Like we want to rid them of all of those things that some of us in our generation have had to do. Like I'm in my thirties coming to the realization about certain things. And I'm like, Man, it would have been nice <laughs> if this was established in my childhood where when I got 18, I wouldn't have to be going through all these different life lessons. And so it's exactly. <laughs> but yeah, just being able to sit, tell ourselves as parents, like for me, it, it is so hard, as you mentioned. But for me, I'm like, I'd rather wait this thing out, get the small wins as we go and 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 hope and pray and wish that the fruits of our labor will be awesome when they get to the point where they're happy healed children doing their best being their best selves yes and I think in the process um community is an important oh yeah part of this we need the support I think I I saw you you have a texting community I do yeah so is that to support parents (laughs) yeah so I um I learned about the app community um through some people that I follow and I was they were using it for their you know different reasons but I was like you know what, I would love to use that for parents, Mm. like have parents just, um, you know, reach out and I, you know, I'll send different things to parents, either posts that I see or just some interesting stuff that I think would benefit them in their parenting journey. Or I'll, I'm really good about, Hey, how are you? Are you good? Like just checking in on parents and giving them an opportunity to say, you know what, I'm not good or yeah, I'm doing great or whatever it might be. Um, I have some parents run some things by me, like, Hey, this situation came up. I don't know how to handle this, you know, can I run this by you? And we're texting back and forth. And so I, I, I love it. It's a, it's a good way to have a, like you said, the village, the community of like, man, and people don't have to respond. A lot of, you know, my people that follow don't, but when the people need to, and they do it, they, they have that as a resource. Yeah. That's, that's so great for me. I think tech as a parent, like texting is the most accessible yeah. communication, you know, when you're with your kids all day, like yeah. that's, that's how I talk to people. I've got, I've got, you know, some friends that I feel like are my 
parenting buddies where I could mm-hmm. just like be able to reach out and because yeah. we're all like we're all so separated like in our homes and it mm-hmm. can feel like there's there's always something that comes up and you can feel like you're the only one going through it yeah. um but yeah to have that support so so that's awesome so at yeah. the end we'll talk about all these these things that people oh, could, yes. um, <laughs> could join um and I wanted to ask you to um in in the work that you're doing um, I want to know both your greatest challenge and then the greatest reward. So I guess let's start with the challenge and then we'll get to the reward. I, the challenge for me right now is just balancing everything. Um, it, it, because I'm working full time and <laughs> I feel like I'm working full time building my business. It really feels that way. Yeah. Uh, so like at times I feel like I have full, two full time jobs. It's for me, it's like, okay, how do I balance all of this one? How do I also be a good father to my son? How do I also be a good husband to my wife? And I'm constantly like on the the hamster Mm -hmm. on the wheel, just trying to figure out and make sure that I, you know, balance all those different things. And so for me right now, lately, that's been the biggest challenge for me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's it's. uh... It's like, yeah, all these roles that you're playing, trying oh, yeah. to, to balance it all, that is not easy. And yeah. as the parent of a young kid, I, it just adds. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And then also, like, because I'm in the service of serving parents and serving students, the, the most, mm-hmm. you know, the challenging population, a population that honestly needs, you know, this type of work the most, um, I'm also giving so much to these students, these parents. I also feel yeah. bad when I'm not, you know, I'm not filling my cup or doing the different things that I need to do to mm. make sure that I'm present, you know, for these students, for these parents. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm always like yeah. challenging myself in that aspect. What are, are there some ways that you, you take care of yourself? Some things that you have found that are, that help you to fill your cup? Yeah. Uh, working out lately. Um, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm probably working out about five to six times a week. Um, and so that's something that really helps me, you know, de-stress and, you know, push the iron to get the frustration out. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, being able to hang out with my family, um, doing things with my son or just spending time with him while he's doing things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then just, you know, building that relationship with my wife. Um, when I plant or the, when I make those deposits into our relationship, it, it also helps me you know, <laughs> relieve all the different stress that I put on myself to make sure that I'm like, all right, are they taken care of? Or are they taken care of? And it's right. just like, nope, let's take care of yourself, DJ. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. absolutely. When you're in that, the career of, of being in oh, service, yeah. that's, oh, yeah. it's so important. So it's like, it sounds like you said, you like come back home. It's like, oh, yeah. you, it's, and that helps you. Just breathe. Um, I don't have to be yes. anything other than, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's easy to just keep on going and, oh, and yeah. become burned out. Yep. especially in this work. Oh, yeah. um, so tell me about the the greatest reward that you've you've seen so far from the work you're doing. I um, so many, um, whether it was a parent that we worked with and I suggested some things to her um, to try with her son. And literally the next week she came back and she was like, I tried it. And I saw, you know, uh, immediate improvement in my child. And so that always makes mm. me happy. Um, some of the connections that some of my parents have been able to connect, you know, make with their students, you know, based off of communication in our groups and different things is always makes me happy. But there was one situation, um, a student that I had mentored when I first started working um, with the high school uh, population. And this student was rough, like, I was trying everything that I could to motivate him, like everything that I could to get him to, you know, right the ship. And um, I think he ended up maybe getting expelled from school and we just kind of lost contact. Um, And just recently in the last couple of months, he reached out to me. Um, I think he's now graduated. I think he might have went to a continuation school to get his diploma. And, um, you know, he's trying to turn over a new leaf. Um, and so he he had <laughs> he messaged me the other day and was like, you know, man, I really wish I would have listened to you when I was young. <laughs> but like for me, I'm like, hey, man, it's never too late. One and two yeah. it's like for me, I just looked at like, yeah, I wish you would have listened to me. But the reality is I did my job. I planted the seed. 
I let you know that I was a safe person. I let you know that I got your back no matter what. I never judged you for, you know, do making the decisions that you made and you felt comfortable enough to come back and reach out to me and, and be in connection that way. Like to me, that makes all this work worth it. And it reminds me of something that you said earlier is like the long-term game. Like it's situ and that he's not the only situation I've had where I've had a student, you plant the seed, you don't see it, you know, blossom until four or five years later. And I'm like, oh, that's, you were the kid that was spelling and now you're passing on your, oh, okay. <laughs> and so for me, I, I've seen it too many times to know like, hey, even though it don't look like we're, you know, we're doing this work, we're being conscious parents, we're being intentional about how we are with our kids, even though it doesn't look like it works right now, just know, like I've seen too many times that you will start to see fruits of your labor in the future for sure. Yes, that's yeah. a theme that we I come back to over and over um, when I talk specifically to like kids yoga teachers and oh, stuff yeah. when you're like you're sharing these concepts with kids and you might not see any, you, you don't, you know, you don't see results necessarily. Oh, yeah. Like it, it's about the process, but then, like you said, you get these kids reaching out or you hear a story from a parent or yep. whatever it might be. And it just kind of reminds you that like, it's way bigger than you. Oh yeah. And it's kind of like that surrender to being like, to know that you're doing the work and that you like you said you you tried everything with him and it, oh yeah <laughs> he wasn't ready yeah. but now that's incredible the fact that yeah. now he remembers you and he's oh, like yeah. he, oh <laughs> you yeah. know now he, he gets it you know so it did it did the it did come to fruition what you were trying so yep. thank you for sharing that that's so oh, absolutely that's so important to remember as parents and as teachers I think we um, all need that reminder of like, all hey, the time. <laughs> like, because <laughs> it's so hard, right? Yeah, it's like, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, I know as, as a parent, as even the work I'm doing, it's like, I, there's so many times you just kind of, you, you question, I know I question like, oh, is, it, is this even worth it? The amount mm -hmm. that I'm putting in, but I, the answer is yes. So whoever's doing work <laughs> like this, or anyone listening, who's a parent, who's trying to parent in this way, like, it, it's worth it. It's oh, definitely yeah. worth it. No doubt about it. Um, okay, so I, yeah, I was go gonna ahead. say when when my son every time my son like says that he loves us unprompted, I know it's worth it, right? Because yeah. <laughs> a lot of time I don't remember as a kid like telling my parents that I loved them without them initiate you know initiating yeah. it. Yeah. Um, and so for him to be like, Dad, I love you, or you know, <laughs> well, I like you. that's how I know. I'm like, okay. We, we we're good we're and on the right track yeah he knows it's coming oh, from yeah. within him so you know you, you've established that oh, it yeah. must be very I can imagine it, it must be healing for you in many ways to see your son being raised in this different way and like and how he responds to it yeah um it's, it's just rewarding and, and it's not I, I think in the beginning I probably was like oh I'm gonna give him everything I didn't get and I, yes. I've, I've learned being in this field like that's not the exact way to be mm. um but through my healing and understanding like for me it's just I'm just happy that you know he's gonna be able to still deal with all his different challenges but with little to no hindrance for me hopefully <laughs> like yes. that's that's why I, I'm like very happy about that <laughs> right yeah it's funny like I know when my first my daughter was born like wanting to create this perfect environment and then you just mm -hmm. realize very quickly like oh no life's not like that okay? <laughs> we, we can't protect them from these things they're no. gonna struggle they're gonna go yeah. through but like you said it's like our job to like to guide them mm -hmm. the image of like can't like stop the fires but we can like help them yeah. you know we could walk through with them and, and yeah. be there for them absolutely um, so, okay, I want to hear your gem. So I always, I like to end with these kids yoga gems. Um, okay. So for you, what would be your one big piece of advice that you would offer to anyone working with children? Oh, man, I, I feel like I might've said it already. So let me try to create a different one. I, my advice for you working with students is I think you kids, is you have to see them as the people that they are. Um, I think so many times as adults, we've been so conditioned to believe that we're the adult, they're the child, they don't know any better, they don't understand. And the reality is they know a lot. 
<laughs> our kids, man, these kids are so insightful, even my four-year-old, but specifically teens. And so when you hold space for that, for them to be the people that they are, um, you're going to witness something very, very beautiful. <laughs> it's so, yeah, that's so important. See them, yeah. see them for who they are. Yeah. Allow them to be who they are. Like you said, this idea that we're somehow above children, yeah. it's, it's just not true. We're, we're all human beings. We're yes. all having human experiences. And yes. yeah, I love that. Thank you. And no problem. Okay. Well, um, I could talk to you probably for hours, but we'll, we'll wrap <laughs> it up. I'd love for people to be able to find you, like find your work. So can you point us to social media, your website, the texting community, all of that? Yes, yeah, so you definitely can find all parenting related content on DJ Inspires Parenting, um, it just says it's failed. And then my personal page is linked to that if you're interested. And then I have the Facebook page as well as the um, DJ Inspires Purposeful Parenting page on uh, Facebook. And then the parent text community number is 562-262. 5113. If you're watching a video, I close my eyes because I want to make sure <laughs> that I have the correct number. But yes, 562-262-5113. When you hear this on the podcast, just say, just text podcast to that number and I'll know that you heard it on the podcast and I'll say what up to you. So there's that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, for taking the time for doing the work you're doing yes and for sharing your wisdom it's it's really you're you're just making a big impact so it was it was so awesome to talk to you hey and it has been a blessing that I've made it to where I am today and so I in turn am choosing to be a blessing to as many people as possible so yeah you, you are you are <laughs> thank, thank you. you so much all right have, have a great night you as well thank you thank you